Hello everybody, this is Frogman and welcome back to Compact Claustrophobia. Last episode, we can kind of do a little bit of recap and discuss because it was a rather long episode and I'm pretty sure I bored the crap out of you guys by the time we got to the end of it. And then there's a couple other things we're going to catch up on. There's also a few modifications I want to change but uh, or show you guys because there has been a few updates in the base and then we're going to try to do a little bit of progression. But last episode, we played around in this mess of cubes in here that have multiple nested cubes inside of it so that we can actually progress down various lines and get some things at least made so that we can make power. So let's get back into this little thing, or at least we can we can just kind of look at this. We're taking cactus, we're taking the cactus, we're using a sawmill to turn the cactus into pulp biomass. We're using this sawmill, which is incredibly loud at this point, decided to turn on to create sawdust, which we input into a sequential fabricator to make pulp bio blend. Pulp bio blend is then pumped into this fluid transposer with a little bit of sewage, liquid sewage, to create poop, which we do uh, basically take a little bit of poop and some wheat and another sequential fabricator from these uh, garden cloches over here. And the uh, liquid sewage is being made in this little process where we take a piece of this poop, put it into this auto clicker. This auto clicker clicks on this stone barrel, which then creates with a little bit of water coming out of this pipe, more liquid sewage, which continuously cycles around. Now, as we go to the end of the last, or at least the end of the chain, after all of that's all done and said and over with, we are then pumping that fuel, should say, more or less, and water into steam dynamos that have the di augment boiler conversion set up in them so that they only produce steam. And those each one of these single boilers, should say the steam boiler, can support two steam dynamos with the steam or I should say augment turbine conversion in them which considerably makes them make a lot of RF attacks. So I believe there was what 14 or something in here and we had a discussion about whether or not we could actually fit another one in here and I need to quit hitting the wall. Um, the production is such that after about four hours of running the game while I was waiting on other things to happen we filled this chest. So it, the I did a little bit of change, as you guys can see in here, and we're going to start on the updates, upgrades of what I did do, and we'll start in here. Is The biggest problem with these dynamos, when you do that, they run non-stop all the time. They just continuously burn and eat fuel. So there's one way of kind of stopping that problem, and it's something that I always tend to forget that exists in thermal dynamics or thermal whatever this stuff is, it's thermal dynamics, is the uh, structural ducts and the uh, redstone relays. Redstone relays in the game, if we can get these over here, this is something I want to talk about because it's a very important thing. When we're playing very small compact and we don't have access to Ender I.O. as of yet, Redstone relays, when you get a little bit of nether quartz, which we already have, and the ability to make signalum nuggets, or signalum period, you can make redstone relays. And these structural ducts shouldn't be that much harder to make either. Where did they go? There they are. They're just a little bit of lead and a little bit of iron, and you get a bunch of structural ducts. Now, structural ducts are just connectors. That's all they are. They don't really care. They're just there to carry any type of signal. So redstone relays are very fancy because they have the ability to run a comparator input as well as other inputs, like an input-output redstone kind of thing that you can set based on a signal, based on a color, based on an in and out. I don't want to fool with it because if I do, I will turn things on that I don't want to turn on. What that allows me to do, all said in one breath, is turn these guys on and off based on a load inside this uh, reinforced energy cell. So I have a comparator input set up here. Just This is just to get these things to shut off so that they don't burn constantly. Um, it's reading off of this energy cell. And when the energy cell hits a level of, I forget, somewhere about 12 or should say, once that energy cell... What these things do is they'll emit a redstone signal, which this relay can technically read. Now, it's not necessarily emitting a redstone signal, but this relay is reading the storage capacity of that cell. And when that storage capacity goes under a certain level, which at this point I have it set at 12, it will emit a redstone signal of 12, or I should say 15, to the rest of the thing, which should, in theory... If I remember correctly, yeah, light these guys off and make them run. So once it goes, like right now, it's emitting a redstone signal that is keeping them from running until that level gets under 12. Once the level is under 12, it removes the redstone signal from all of the boilers on the bottom, and they go to work. 
Now, the reason why there's structural ducts, and that's a very important thing, is because this is how you can interconnect between various lines and types, and these relays can be used as long as there is not a servo or a filter, which I can't get to it, but yeah, the filter that's on the end of that pipe, you can use them to be able to broadcast a redstone signal to stuff around it. So this is a very important thing, and this has managed to make this whole entire stinking, ridiculously stupid setup in here and everything else in here even more efficient to the point that if I want to, I can build that dude over here, put it right there, and put two more of these dynamos in, and it'll run. Because the amount of this stuff that's going on in here, or at least that backlog of fuel, there's no way even running it wide open with eight, I think with, what is it, eight, nine of these boilers, dynamos, whatever, all that stuff, they won't, they won't be able to eat through that by the time they can charge that cell. Now... There's a lot of RF attack. I mean, again, if we did the fourth one or the, the ninth one here on the, the other two dynamos, that's over, that's like, like 4,000 RF attack coming out of this cube. So it's pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty fun. So that was the thing that I was missing, and that was the thing that I wanted to make sure you guys saw. In this cube, not this cube, we need to go back in the power cube very quickly. I, I just want to kind of recap a little bit of this. I did go ahead and throw a bin up to collect some of the wood, and I did go ahead and throw a tank up to collect some of the sewage because we need sewage to graft things in world. And there is also a garden cloche back here. Since I had a little bit of space, I stuck a garden cloche in there so that we could grow a little bit of sugar cane. And I may, for that matter, try to stick another one back there for a food or whatever. But we have all of the weed in the world now, so I don't have to really worry about eating cooked fish or stuff like that. So we're good. All right, out of this cube and into the main base area, if you notice on this side, we've done a little bit of reconfiguring. Now that we have power, I was able to do what I wanted to do with these guys. Using signal and plated item ducts, I now can feed them power as well as pickaxes. And that's really, really, really stinking handy because... Being able to speed those guys up, and I guess I should have looked in here very quickly, being able to speed these up especially, we're now doing one tick, or one click every ten ticks. So that's two ticks a second, or two clicks a second, and it's only costing us 40 or 50 RF per tick per thing. And they will only do the ticking if, and this is a silly if, if they have something in their inventory. So I've managed to set a... Basically, there's a little strong box right here with a item duct and a servo sucking the parts out of the stuff into there, pushing it into that block, so that all I have to do now, if I need anything out here, is toss the appropriate pickaxe I want in that, and they will go to work. So we have quite a bit of stuff now. I've actually chewed through a lot of materials to get to today's episode, getting things ready to go. So we did do a little bit more work. I know I, bl I believe I made that, and I went ahead and made it make a bunch of lava for us because we need it. And I made an Ignix extruder because, well, you know, why not? So this tip, this block is still the same. I did go ahead and upgrade our redstone furnace because I got tired of sitting there waiting on it. And I think all that said and done, we are done. So what are we going to do today? Today we're going to get to the next size cube, okay? We need to get out of these little bitty 5x5s five into the 7x7s seven because in order to do the next level of crafting for the next level of these wonderful cubes, we need to have the next size. Plus, I believe in the next cube, we're going to start making diamonds, which is awesome because once we get to make diamonds, we don't have to make these cubes the hard way anymore, which is very, very cool. So, all right, let's look at our quest book with all that done. Blah. We have a lot of things covered, taken care of. And yes, I, am, I know I'm probably some of you guys are probably wondering why I'm not doing the glitches yet. I know what those are. And I know what's in them. I don't need to worry about it right now. We'll probably get into the glitches that we should be doing once we clear the rest of this chapter. Today, we need to make a crusher. Well, in order to make a crusher, we need to make a engineer's manual. And we need to make a projector. So we've got a couple of things that we need to craft today. So let's go ahead and very simply make the engineer's manual, which is just a book and a lever. And that should be one of my favorite. Come on, give me the achievement. Come on. No, no achievement. Oh boy. The, whoa, hold on. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. Now we can at least read it. I love the book, this thing. We, we're going to need the book for a few things, mainly because uh, I can't remember how to craft certain things. So the next size building, actually, once we get a couple of things going, we may end up even being able to do things a little bit easier. So we've got our manual now. We need to make a projector. 
projector 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 is just going to be a very simple kind of thing and I think I already screwed up on that pot where is my hammer did we get a hammer have we made a hammer we have made a hammer cool we'll just do this the easy way then give me two of those and we need a little bit of redstone which I think we actually don't have I've managed to craft so much stuff lately so projector there's a, a lantern, and there should be everything except the wood that is in that. Okay, and I'm going to do that mainly because it's just a, an easy way of doing various things. So I do have an inventory full of stuff, and as you can see, I'm pretty much ready to go, I hope. So what we need to do is we need to be able to craft all of the parts pieces we need for a crusher. So that I believe the quest book is actually going to list out everything we need, correct? So we need 10 light engineering blocks, a bunch of steel scaffolding, a bunch of hoppers, and a bunch of steel fence. So let's see here. Let's start with the steel fence. Steel fence is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. If you read the recipes, there's no reason to make the rod mold for these because you get the exact same count out of the steel rods as you did with the other things. So we're going to start with the steel fence. And this is one of those crafting recipes where you get one more than you actually need. And we need to make a little bit more steel scaffolding. Which that, I think it wants 10. Where is my crusher? We need 10 steel scaffolding, and then we need 10 light engineering blocks and 9 hoppers. 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 Come on, brain. Why is your... Th there we go. That's what I needed. Oh, iron, 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 iron. Give me 9 of those. Thank you. And light engineering blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just going to make at that moment that much of those. Is that everything for this? Yes. There is our quest complete for that. Awesome. Really? So much space going to waste. They want me to make small machine pieces. Can I tell you how many minutes it took me to do four of those in a row to get some of this stuff done? I kind of jumped on this morning. It's been a couple of hours. Of course, I've been doing other things, but I had all the resources. It's just this time-intensive kind of just sitting here building the parts, running them through that compactor, and then waiting on things to happen. So, anyhow, let's get in here and build our friend. So just, just as an easy thing, we have this book set to, we have the engineer's manual set to the crusher, and I need a projector programmed to the crusher, and we need to figure out, I hope this is going to, where is the redstone block? I want to make sure that's at least facing us. Now it just barely, and I mean just barely, fits in here. We're standing on block one. All right, so we're going to do that. And build the thing. Put it down. There you go. And where are my steel scaffoldings? Give me my crusher projector back. Thank you. All right. This is the thing I always screw up. Is I always forget that block exists there and the one in the middle forget exists there. So, let's see. Redstone engineering block. A bunch of fence. Can I get this built? Maybe. Let me just stay down there for a minute. Is this going to work? I guess I have enough headroom, right? All right, nice. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And we'll just do this so that that thing doesn't do that. And click. Oh, awesome. All right, now we got to get power in over here. So we need a tunnel. Tunnel. Tunnel, 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 tunnel. Give me a tunnel. And tunnel, 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 tunnel. We just need one of those. That'll be functional for the moment. Uh. Pfft. Let's get out of here and grab... I bet you we might have screwed up, too. I, I'm pretty sure I set my spawn inside that thing where I can get in and out of it. And I would like one more hopper, actually. 
since we're going to be using that for a few things, I think. We'll do you, cool, and we have that set on the east side, so it's the opposite of that one. That, that, and I guess I can just do that, right? Hard and flux duct. Hard and flux duct. Really? So that's all I had to do. So the next step is we need to make one of these to make the next one. Well, I know I need four of them. Oh, wow, that thing's fast. <laughs> Class complete, really. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand that one. It makes total, complete sense. Why would we not just crush everything? Okay, let's put some of this away. I made way too much steel because I knew that was all coming. Then we'll put those modular pieces away. And I think for the minute we need to do... I just put everything away that I needed. Oh, cool. So we should be to the point now where we're going to have to do the one thing that I knew I forgot to do unless I left them in there, which is we need to make a few more of these yeah i didn't get them done so we need that what else can we do while we're sitting here because the crusher should now start to work through some of these things we're going to go ahead and make the normal compact machine here very shortly and then we're going to move in a direction kind of I know that this is kind of one of those, we, we need to go this direction, but I also know that what I want is down here. I know I want diamonds, and I know I want all that stuff, and I know everything that's over here is something that's very important for us to get to work, especially the fact that we can do trees. And once we get trees, we can do a couple of things. Now, I don't know exactly how much fun it's going to be to try to produce trees, because I haven't been there yet, but we'll see. So, compact. Click, 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 and we need one of these, and we need one of those. Thank you. Hello, sir. Ding, ding. Awesome. Ha. <sighs> ah, click. Huh? Reconstructing with flux. What are you talking about? What did I do? What did I just open? Um, I have no idea what that was. I will have to go look for it. Unless it's a challenge or something. Is it up here? I have no idea. So yeah, we're going to have to start clearing through some of these. And that's wonderful. So let's get back to our infinite tiny space area. That means we can start working through some of these things like fission reactors and nuclear fuel and melters and other directions. This is actually a really interesting thing. We're going to take quite a few of these and melt them down to make this fluid. So I j just kind of looked ahead a little bit. But soggy sapling. Let's start working towards the end of this thing. We're just going to kind of try to finish out this episode working down that chain. This is going to become our new workshop area once I get to that point. So... I uh, will probably do that in between episodes because this dude should hold an arc furnace, which is pretty cool. And an arc furnace is going to be rather fun to try to power inside one of those. So we may end up not moving into it just yet. So we do have a new machine room and we do have a nice big 7x7 seven seven machine. Let's see if we can get to a little bit more stuff because I want those mineral saplings. I really want those mineral saplings. It'll help us do a little bit more fun stuff. So... Okay, you can now craft sapling by throwing it into water. Now it has to space grow as well. I think the problem is we already accidentally did that somewhere. Yes. Drop the sapling into water. Any of the bonsai oak saplings into water will get you that. So that's how you manage to make that work. Now that this block right here should be big enough, technically, to finally grow a tree should be finally get to grow a tree i love it awesome cool oh
There we go. Next log. Man, that's been, what is it, six episodes, seven episodes now, and we finally got trees? Do that again. Do it again. Come on. I'm a fertilizing a tree. Come on. Grow tree. That means we can also start doing some of the other quests that we get, like being able to finish some of the wonderful stuff down in the beginning chain. So this shouldn't be that hard. We now have wood. Coke, brick. I knew we were going that direction. This is where... Completely organic. Thank you, Ristron, for your woes. All right, cool. Well, let's get on here, and we can start working on Coke Brick. I knew this was coming, because the the cool part about this also as well is we can now start to make steel a little bit better. So let me see. Coke. And I don't know why my thing is unlegged it. Start to make steel a little bit better. So lots of clay, lots of sandstone, and lots of brickages. Let me knock that out, and uh, we will come right back. Alrighty, well, I think we're going to have a couple of really quick cuts here because I just realized what the rest of that quest was going to require, but let's go ahead and do the Coke brick now that I have all the parts made. We need 27 of those. 27 blocks. Thank you very much. And I think we're going to find a spot. I don't think it'll fit in here. No. Oh, gumming and on. Don't umming and on. Just put it in here for now. Uh, let's see. We can drop him off in here. We'll build it in this corner for the moment since we have a nice big wide open space. But we need to build a coke oven. And then we need to let the coke oven run long enough to make us one piece of coal coke, which will probably take quite a minute. So, let's see. Click, 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 click. Click, click. And hammer is right there. I always go looking in the wrong place for it. Coke oven. Hooray. Coke oven. I'm going to give you a single piece of oak wood. There's a reason. This is probably the last time I'm using this thing. So, I am going to stand right here and wait on that thing to finish. Almost done. Done. Okay, well, I didn't take that long, but I figured it was a good idea. Now, that's not how that's supposed to work, but that's the deal in here. Okay. Okay. Coal Coke. Coal Coke is a Coke oven with a charcoal. So now we do this, and we do this again, and we wait for it to finish. I almost fell asleep for that. There we go. Piece of Coal Coke. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Thank you. Excellent. Wonderful. Oh, that's going to lead us down a path of wonderful silliness that's going to be just absolutely fun. So we're going to be playing through down along this direct line. We're going to need to be able to make hop graphite dust, which is squeeze coal into some dust to make some better dust. Squeeze some coal coke dust into some better dust. Check out the immersive engineer. Yeah, I know. I, we... Uh, we're going to have to go down that line because we need to be able to get to hopping about, hopping graphite dust, hop graph, all that wonderful stuff. Because in order to be able to make some of the parts for the nuclear craft equipment, so we can just look at that melter really quickly, um, these plates require tough alloy. Tough alloy, if I recall correctly, is going to require something along those lines. Where did it go? Is it tough alloy? Tough alloy, that's the basic plating is what I'm going to be getting into. Graphite dust, which if I recall correctly, graphite dust is going to be taking a, I think it's a, it's in here somewhere, I know it is. I found it once before. Pulverized charcoal, pulverized one of these wonderful things, but I think that number, this works, what phone, go away. I believe somewhere along down the line, I can't remember exactly, I've kind of looked at it. Somewhere along down the line, we're going to take hop graphite dust and hop graphite and use that in place of that kind of stuff. And hop graphite is lots of fun to make. It takes eight pieces of coal coke, which we basically take what we just did and run it through over and over and over again. So um, between episodes, I'm going to be running stacks and stacks and stacks of wood through this machine, which means I'm probably going to build another one of these just so I have room enough to do things. Although we may end up tearing down some one of the other 
one of the other cubes that we have there. So there was a quest, and I know it's kind of a silly, interesting thing, is the these Faxel Ho, this this Boron's Faxel Ho is a very or very interesting thing in that it would it clipped, it can mine we leaves, wood, and cobblestone. Let's look at the usages on this very quickly. Scavenges, you will get sawdust. Whoop de doo. Scavenging on leaves, you get apples. Apples are something we're going to need eventually, and we'll also get stone pebbles. And apparently, according to what the book says, the auto clickers can hold it. Well, if an auto clicker can hold one of these, that's what I figured I was going to get told is how to automate trees using this when I can just do that direction. So we'll look into this, I think, as we go on down the line. I think it's going to be something I may be playing with as we go. But I think for now, guys, we're going to give it a break. I have had enough fun as this is. We managed to get the nine or the 7x7 seven seven rooms, and we've gotten Cole Coke going. So I'm going to let a lot of this stuff run and do a bit of farming in between episodes. See you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.